What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916, getting down with Fresh Out, and you tune into another edition of Prison Talk. I'm here with my friend Robert L. Hines. Uh, worked in the correctional system as a guard, got a lot of game, got a lot of knowledge, and you guys have been asking us to have a correctional officer on the channel, so I'm gonna let him tell some of his crazy correctional guard stories, because he's got a lot of them, and you see a lot of shit working in the correctional system. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was amazing my time there. Um, the one thing that I want to point out is, is there's a difference. I worked in a jail. Okay, a and what jail, city? In the city of Chicago. Okay. In, uh, Cook okay. County Jail is the name of okay. the jail. Okay, Cook County, okay. And, um, and what you find happen uh, in a jail is for people who have less than a year's time or pretrial detainees. Mm -hmm. So what they call county time is less than a year. Okay. Right. So you, you max out a year. Right. That's the most you can do is a year in the county. Now you can be in a year in the county longer than a year mm -hmm. if you are adjudicating your case. Fighting your case. Right. If you're still fighting your case, then you gotta dispose of it somehow. So they gotta put you somewhere. And if you can't bond out, they put you in jail. Okay. So that's like if you got like a murder case, you'd be in there for seven years or so. Damn. But if you only have like a smaller case that it, it'll get adjudicated quicker. Um, then you don't, you don't, you know, you won't be there that long. But mm. it's a lot of cats that was in there for murder. There was a very large maximum security uh, contingency there. Mm. And 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 your own, if you if you have less than a year, then you they make you work off the time that you have left. So that's the only way they can force you to work is if you have, you know, county time. Mm -hmm. But if you just there uh, on on a regular uh, murder or something like that, they can't make you work. But you still want to because don't nobody want to just sit around sit around yeah you want to do something with your time right right you want to do something productive and these cats are amazingly productive like there's a group of guys who are always going to be like the cattle like they're going to hang out and play cards and watch maury you know then it's another group of cats who are going to be fighting to get out every day mm -hmm. they're going to be in the law library they're going to be doing all the shit it takes to get out and those cats are the cats that i gravitated towards as an officer Right. I have a little logo. Somebody drew my logo. It was an inmate that drew the logo. Mm. He was like, dude, this is what I see you as. And I was like, this is amazing. Mm. Right. A lot of talent. Lots of talent. Even the, even the cattle has talent mm -hmm. because they just don't want to fight. They just don't want to be a part of the situation that they stuck in. So they escape by watching TV or playing cards or something. But they, they equally as amazing. Everybody got something they bring to the table. Um, I worked in a in a really big building, brand new. It was part, it represented the expansion of locking people up. They had 1,500 guys in just my building, mm. right? And, and sometimes you would have to, I would work in areas, I worked in different areas all the time. And, I, and there was this one particular time I was working in, in what they call PC. PC is uh, protective custody. You, you, if, you, if you are a rapist or something, like it's a big public rape, or if you are, uh, if, you're, if your case is very public. High profile gang members? High profile gang members who are not, um, not a lot of high profile gang members. Actually, high profile gang members. Guys who may be telling problem. on somebody that's like high exactly. profile. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, trying to, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one particular day, there was this young girl. I can't remember her name. I'm so sorry. But she had gotten killed by this guy. And they thought that there was three little boys who killed her. Because she was raped also. And they thought it was three little boys, but the little boys, they just wanted her bike. So they hit her in the head with a rock, took a bike, and left. Mm. This guy happened upon her laying down, had sex with her, because he thought she was dead. Oh, my God. And he probably, when she started to move around, he probably murdered her. Now, I wasn't there to see it, but, but all of the facts of the case mm. unfold towards That's that. That's crazy. And his defense, this is the way this cat wanted to defend itself. She was already dead when I got there. I just had sex with her. Oh, my God. This was his defense. And so one wow. day, I'm, I'm, I'm in my little room, but it was, you know, doors open, and it's direct contact. You are sitting with inmates <clears throat> most of the time. And I had, for whatever reason, it was a lot of dudes wanted to hang out with me. So we all in this little room <laughs> just hanging out talking shit, you know. And, but on this day, it wasn't that because it's, everybody locked up. So he comes out to me as an individual and says, hey, man, I want to work for you. I want to clean up for you. And I'm looking at the dude, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So I don't say nothing, but I just don't let him do it. So I put him back in his cell because you only give him an hour. Mm. Out of 24 hours in a day, you get one hour out when you're in protective custody. 
So the dude goes back to his cell. Then this other guy comes out, who I let in the cell next to him, and him and this guy were lovers, right? So the dude come out there. And he, this is how he's talking. He goes, hey, man, don't let me out with that baby murderer, because he might do something to me. And I was like, okay, you ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> you know, I ain't you. But a few minutes later, and I'm not, this is what happened. A few minutes later, I'm sitting at my desk, and I look up, and he is in the guy's chuck hole with his face in the top part. And where you put the food in the door, yeah. there's a hole in the door, and you can open it and close it as you need to to put in food. He is in there jagging dude off. Oh, wow. Wow. The, uh, the dude, the, the, so the dude, the, the little, little punk dude is up in there jacking other dude off? Absolutely. Absolutely. While they are, he just standing there jagging dude off through the chuck hole. I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, this is crazy shit. You know, like, I, you can't make this shit up. I'm just watching, like, what do I do at this point? <laughs> <laughs> hey, see, stop that. Hey, let go. <laughs> Freeze. <laughs> Turn that dick on yeah. <laughs> Stop jiggling that thing. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, what the oh. fuck do I do? And now. <laughs> you know, you, don't touch me. <laughs> right. Don't come down here. No one don't ask me for shit. Don't, no, we don't oh. have anything to talk about. Yeah, yeah. They were just having a lover spat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. This is crazy. <laughs> what time? Oh. Right when I was getting ready to leave the jail, I was about to quit. I was yeah. like, I didn't have enough of this bullshit. <laughs> I'm up out of here. Yeah. And they put me in the PC again, right before yeah. I was getting ready to leave. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and I could hear somebody getting fucked up. Because it ain't nobody out. The TV's not on. Yeah. It's just straight silence. And I hear I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I'm going to quit, nigga. I can't let nobody hit me in the face. Somebody I can't mess up my glamour. Yeah. But I can't let nobody get beat. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I get up and I walk in there and I get to the door. When I open the cell door, the guy who was doing the fighting, the guy that was he was beating was kind of like standing there like, finish him. And he kicks this dude. <clears throat> and kicks the motherfucker coal out the cell. So when the guy comes past me, I close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you <laughs> just mad at him, nigga. You might be mad at the wall. So man. I can't have you. Yeah, yeah, so you want me to shut this? Man, I got to close this door because I can't fuck up the money making. Oh, man. So I close the door, I call my supervisor. So my supervisor come down, white boy. He owns some gangster shit, you know. Yeah. Not real gangster shit, yeah. you know what? The best that he could be, yeah. you know. And he, I want you to lock these men up and put handcuffs on this guy and sit him. Now, this dude is barely standing. Yeah. I said, I'm not putting handcuffs on him. I said, you need to go in there and handcuff that Brahma bull. <laughs> so I open the door. Yeah. And I'm going to go handcuff the dude. To my surprise, he's angry, but he's not angry at me. Turns around, puts his hands behind his back. I handcuff him and I take him to the dispensary. Mm. And, but all the while, I'm thinking, I'm not finna put handcuffs on the victim. This dude gonna need all his wits about him to walk down. <laughs> <laughs> he just got kicked out the door. Yeah, you know, he's not finna fuck oh, with him. He man. beat up. Yeah. The one we need to deal with is this dude right yeah, here. Yeah. When I got him out the cell, the dude was like, hey man, I just don't need nobody talking shit about my case. Oh wow. And apparently this guy was telling people about his case. Oh shit, that's, that's a no no. Man, you don't talk about that shit. No, no, no. You don't talk about that shit. He beat the piss out of that. Would you say that it was it, it, it was wilder stuff going down in the in the PC pod than the main the main uh like the main units? It is a different type of wild because it's only two people in the cell. Yeah, 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 and, and it's so not it's a lot of interaction. So mm -mm, it's only so much you can do. However, in the day room, it's jamming in the day room. <laughs> yeah, I know that day room, that TV man, they be shit. And I was in a building that had two TVs. Now, yeah. how does the TV work? Cause I told I told dudes all the time that TV would get your wig split. Man, well, man, and not only the TV, it's um, things that you can buy in commissary that will get you really fucked up. They used to have this thing called a Nemo cake. It was two inches by two inches, and it was about that thick, and it had a, a, a leather of, a layer of icing, but it was the closest shit that you could get to some shit that your mother would make. Yeah. And if a motherfucker put a Nemo hit on you, a baby, Nemo hit, huh? Nemo cakes. If my, hey, man, I give you a Nemo, go over there and fuck dude up. You about to get fucked <laughs> up over a piece of cake. Oh, like, shit. And they a had this shit, man, they had this shit called uh, um, Pumpkinhead Deluxe, a PhD. They would beat you in your face 
until your face expanded past what it where you look normal. You dig what I'm saying? Like your glamour is totally gone. You ever see that episode of Martin? Oh, when he get he got the yeah, he got the reaction. Dude, yeah, that's how motherfuckers yeah. be like, oh, nigga. Oh, <laughs> what they do to you? Like, right? woo, man. Man, whatever you doing, you need to stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying your head is three times its normal size. They just beat you in your face till your face expands. So it'll just be crazy shit like that. You are like, wow. Were there a lot of gang shit in there? Oh, a whole lot of gang shit. Yeah. However, um, I don't know, man. To me, uh, some shit crossed gang lines. Like, if y'all just hanging out, people didn't act as if, you know, there was a, uh, there was any type of tension between them. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and this is a story that I will never forget. One day I come out, and I'm sitting in the day room this day, and I see one dude watching animal shit. And another, the whole rest of the tier is watching, you know, whatever bullshit, you know. He got um, the TV by himself? He got the TV by himself. So I'm thinking, this little nigga must have status or something, right? So I sit down next to him while he watching TV, and he looks at me and he goes, these motherfuckers will tell you that the lion is the king of the jungle. No, it's the tiger. He was like, the best the lion could be is a few hundred pounds. A tiger could be a thousand pounds of killing. It just go and eat whatever the fuck it want to eat. He's like, the only thing that make the lion cold is that he make them bitches go get his food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said he had broke it all down. He broke it all down. Oh. And I'm looking around, ain't nobody seeing shit to this dude. He ain't that big. He ain't that. So what would they do with he? Would he a hitter? He was a. He was a. He's about his business. He huh? was a shot caller. Oh yeah, a, yeah. And a lot of the shot callers in that jail. Some of them were physically imposing, but a lot of them was just really quick with their hands. You know, I told dudes too, just like how you said, the dudes I met that was shot call, they wouldn't know, like they see out here, oh man, quiet, glasses, little dude, maybe a buck 50, buck 40 something, but a cold, cold strategist. Man, it's Military type, mo- yeah, smart as shit, conditioned, but never went around flexing on nobody, none of that shit. Quiet. Quiet as hell. Quiet. Motherfuckers, the coolest niggas on the team. Cool, cool. Didn't even Running talk. Shit. You seem real humble. Hey, thank you. Man, All I right, appreciate excuse me. you doing yeah. this. Yeah, and you, and you get to talk. Oh, that dude, he got he got a couple bodies. That dude right there, he's over at Samsung putting in work. You're like, that dude? <laughs> that dude right Yeah, there? that dude. Because for, for these cats, it's not really... It's calculated. It's, what can I do to get me from where I am to where I want to be? Mm-hmm. And if that means that you got to lay down, motherfucker, if you don't want to give up what I want, then you just got to lay down. Man, it was this one dude. He was small as hell. He was fast with his hands, smart as hell. He the one who taught me how to play bid wits. I'm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was like, all right, Hans, I'm going to teach you how to play this game. And then afterwards, I'm going to teach you how to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really need to know yeah, the yeah, second part. Yeah, just yeah, teach me the yeah, first part, yeah. you know? And dudes took his time to talk. Like this motherfucker, I would come in on the tier in the morning and I let open up the doors and he come out. What's up, Hans? What you want? I'm like, I ain't on shit today. What y'all on? Well, um, today let's do this. This he has already thought through mm-hmm, the night mm-hmm. what he wanted to do in the day. The next day. And I'm going, fuck it, let's do it. You dig what I'm saying? I would come in and sometimes in the morning I would come in and two dudes would be braiding his hair because he had really long hair. Mm-hmm. And another dude would be bringing him breakfast and shit. And I sit down and he go, hey man, you hungry? You want some breakfast? And I was like, no. Nah. But here's the reason why I would never take nothing from nobody. Not that I gave a fuck they was going to put something in it or none mm-hmm. of that shit, because we actually understood each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He don't have a whole lot. Even mm-hmm. if he got a lot for this situation, yeah. he still ain't got a lot. And it would be cruel for me to take anything from him when I could just walk That's outside. That's right, right. You got freedom. Him. Absolutely. Yeah, you got freedom. Absolutely. And them cats would be cooking up all types of shit. Like, you, you know, okay, milk cartons burn really slowly. So they was using them like sterno. So it was a bench, stainless steel bench with two little seats on it. You put the steno on the seats and it makes the table hot and you got a griddle. And when you smell that shit first thing in the morning, you're like, God damn, these niggas making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it smells remarkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took all the lunches and shit that they had and put them together and they, and they heated them up and it was amazing. It was just like you eating fried bologna as a kid. You know what I mean? It was just the, a delicacy situation that these cats are creating. And this dude, oh, shit. his last name was Williams. He was cold as hell. He told me, he was like, hey, man, these motherfuckers ain't really got shit on me. I'm going to be out of here sooner or later. And he was gone. Sure enough, huh? And then another, about two, three, three days later, he was back. And I was like, what happened? And he said, man, I go to the joint 
I dress in and I dress out, meaning that I go there, you put on the uniform, then you put your regular clothes back on because they finna let you go. Mm -hmm. He said, man, by the time I got to the bus stop, the feds came and got Oh, me. the feds came in, picked the case up. And they put him back in county for some reason. They didn't send him to a fed joint. Mm. Maybe he was in transition at that yeah, point. Yeah, 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 yeah. But after that, yeah. I didn't see him again. Yeah, the feds come in. They drop the state, drop at feds, pick it up. A lot of times they would do that too. And then they take you to a federal hold facility. It's a whole other game. Whole different situation. Whole different situation. No, but these cats was just like, they were just cool as hell. Like, these are the same dudes that's in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I'm saying. Like, there is no such thing as disposable humanity. Everybody got you still seeing that because you say, you know, I might know this is somebody I might have grew up with down the street. I d some of them I actually had grew up down yeah, the street. Yeah. Like my cousin was locked up one day and I had to go over there to see him and shit like, what the fuck you on? Mm. And he was like, hey, man, I need cigarettes. <laughs> like, OK, I can get you cigarettes, but I'm not bringing them in. Yeah, I'll yeah. Get you the cigarettes they got in here. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to be gone by the time commissary comes. Well, I can't really help you then. Until yeah. If you leaving before Saturday, because that's when commissary. Yeah, the goes. draw then I can't really help you very much. Because if I bring anything here, they already hate me. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the help that I'm giving brothers that are in jail, I can't give it to them no more if they catch me with anything. That's right, because they're looking for you if you're sympathizing. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And when I, was, when I was new at the job, one officer uh, told me, these people going to know pretty quickly who you are by the niggas you hang with. Mm -hmm. And they do. And they pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Even if, you know, if it's just another officer that ain't on that shit, and they see too many of y'all getting together, yeah, they're going to start. Yeah, move him up out of here. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're going to start yeah. teaming up on you. Or they, yeah. if they can't move you, because mm -hmm. some shit they can't do because of the union. Exactly. They're going to watch you harder, and they're going to go after you about everything. Man, I got suspended one day. Okay, well, here's the thing, man. If it's bullshit, I'm not finna lend my time to it. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? If it's straight bullshit. And they would like, they had these parking lots, and one parking lot was their parking lot, and they didn't want you parked in there. And I park in there every day. And they'd be like, Officer Hines, if you don't stop parking in our parking lot, we're going to um, suspend you. And I'm like, well, the one thing I know about suspension is it's painless. You, do what I'm <laughs> you yeah. can suspend me if you want to. Put it in conjunction with my off days. Yeah. Because you bitches can't never stop me from making money. As long as white folks print money, I'm going to get some. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you can't stop me. Send me where you will. Because I'm going to do me wherever I go. They suspended me for parking in the wrong parking lot. And then I never stopped parking there. I didn't get another suspension. Because ultimately what this life is, is a battle of wills. That's right, that's right. If you are going to let them run you over, they're going to run you over. But when you stop make, letting them run you over, they're going to treat you differently. You can't hurt me. Yeah, if you're going to submit. You can't hurt me. I'm yeah. there. I'm, look, these inmates love me. And the reason they love me is because I treat them and love them like they supposed to be treated. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. If you black, I know you at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And if you love yourself, they call you a racist. Exactly. Cold game. Yeah. Hey, y'all. There you have it, man. Big Herc 916 with Robert L. Hines, man. Some real prison talk.